Dear friends, it is a very important day for this university while we have the privilege and the honor of having with us the minister responsible for education, universities, and research of the Italian government. And I'm very pleased to see so many friends today, representatives of the Regione Veneto, of the Provincia, of San Servolo Servizi, but I'm particularly pleased to see that the rectors of the three Italian universities are also here. Um, you know that the University of Ca Foscari is well represented here. Unfortunately, Carlo Carraro could not make it because of a sudden illness, but we're pleased to have the rector who will assume the responsibility of the rectorate on the 1st of October, Professor Pugliesi with us. Uh, Arrigo Restucci, who is uh, the rector of UAV, and uh, the rector of Padua, uh, Professor Giuseppe Zaccaria. But I'm pleased that, apart from the other many members of the Academic Council and the academic uh, community, we have so many students and I would like to give them a very warm welcome to this new semester. Well, the music which was playing when we entered the room is, has been composed by Paolo Gasparin, who is here. And it has become our anthem. We have also produced a short video presentation uh, which will be shown to you in public for the first time and I hope you will enjoy it. We live in fast changing times, surrounded by a sea of complexity, languages, cultures, ideas, people. So diverse and so distant, it's time to fill the gap, it's time to come together. Welcome to San Servolo Island. Welcome to the Venice International University, where universities from all over the world created a remarkable space for creativity and innovation, open to students, academics, policymakers, and entrepreneurs. A bridge between diverse cultural backgrounds and contemporary global issues, such as sustainable development, climate change, cultural heritage, social challenges, urban growth, and innovation entrepreneurship with such a glorious past and a fragile present. Venice is the perfect setting for looking towards the future. At VIU, we design new routes of knowledge, connecting a world of opportunities. Venice International University, a global experience. see this, I wish I was a student and I could apply again for, for a scholarship here. As we have seen, VIU is a group of universities coming from many different countries, different continents, that go beyond uh, the traditional divisions of faculties and departments. Um, they share the same campus and are involved together in creating multidisciplinary programs uh, which are very new and which face, we all face. In order uh, to carry out research in these new fields, uh, you need a different kind of preparation. And the students at VIU learn how to move across different cultures, different disciplines, and they learn to approach these global topics with a flexible approach, a creative mind, 
and a very creative spirit. At the time of uh, Prime Minister Palmerston uh, in London, people used to say that uh, the sun never set on the British Empire. Things have changed since then. But we could apply the same expression to our network. We have universities in America, Canada, and the United States, in Europe, uh, Germany, uh, Russia, and we're very pleased we have a very distinguished delegation from Russia today discussing globalization issues with us uh, from Israel, from Italy, from Switzerland, and we go up down to the Far East with uh, China and Japan. And so in fact, uh, when they start working in China, we go to bed. And uh, in America, uh, they just have uh, the afternoon lessons. So basically, we are all working around the clock. Um, this VIU model is unique in its own kind because it's a multilateral association, all universities on equal footing, all decisions are made collegially uh, with the rectors, with the presidents, and with the board of directors and the academic council led by Professor Agar Bujarini. And so each university has an equal say in the program, in the designing and assembling the programs. Uh, thanks to this very international environment, we have signed agreements with the Council of Europe. I think it's probably one of the very few universities around which has a standing agreement with the Council of Europe, the oldest European organization, with the UNESCO, uh, with the International Institute of Humanitarian Law, uh, with the Italian Trade Commission. We also belong to many networks. Thanks to the University of Padua, we have been able to host here the Coimbra group of universities. Uh, we have also uh, members of the UN Global Compact, of the Association of Victorian Studies. And this gives our students and our professors a chance to exchange views and to somehow interact with many of these other universities. We have today the great privilege and honor of having Honorable Stefania Giannini, Minister for Education, Universities, and Research. She's extraordinarily versed and expert in academic matters, having been rector herself of a very important university and very international university in Italy, Università degli Stranieri di Perugia. And during her time, she has been able to play a fundamental role in the conference of rectors, of all the rectors in Italy, because she had the responsibility of international relations of international networks. She has been also elected senator of the Italian parliament, senator of the Senate, and I would like to congratulate her also for the political engagement that she has taken in many, many fields. So I, I'm sure that we all look forward very much to listening to her remarks on a subject that she knows well, which is not only academic work, but also the internationalization of universities and higher institutes. And this is something I know she has always followed with great care. And I'm sure that she will enjoy, enjoy also meeting you after her talk. Thank you very much. Dear President Vattani, dear Dean, Professor Brugiovini, dear colleagues, Italian colleagues and uh, foreign colleagues who came here from very many countries, as you, your President mentioned in his uh, very kind introduction. Thanks for these two. And dear students and professors from the VIU member universities. Yeah, well, um, I, I'm very happy and, and really very honored to be here on the occasion of this uh, opening ceremony. You know that in the academic community, 
the occasion of the opening ceremony is a very important day for the community. And so I, I'm very happy to, to join you in this special day. As a member of the Italian government, which is my current position, but also in my capacity of a university professor, I feel proud to share with you this special day. And I'm here, I think, to learn, to learn very much for your experience, for the, the direct knowledge of all of you, and to get some ideas, some ideas about this topic, which I can mention and define as internationalization and uh, mobility and uh, how can we make in Italy, in Europe, the higher education system more open and more international. You know, uh, this is my first visit uh, in San Severo, San, which is the San name? Severo. San Severo uh, Island. And uh, I immediately realized that this is very, this is a true international campus because uh, if I read well the, the plan I saw some minutes ago, uh, it houses 130 students coming from some of the most prominent universities in the world. And uh, this is a model, in my opinion, we, which could be very interesting to reply, to imitate, not only in Italy, but also elsewhere. Via US, in addition, some special features I want to mention in short. And I see some key words in the background of the project of this university. You already mentioned, Umberto, these key words, but I want to, to underline, if I can, in my introduction. The first is multiculturalism, multiculturalism which means to know each other better than we, we can if we stay at home. If we study in the country, we, we we burn inside. The second in the international dimension, as the only possible horizon for science and knowledge in this century. We, we don't have any research community, any knowledge community, any knowledge space without international, an international dimension. The third key word is multidisciplinary dimension multidisciplinary approach because the boundaries between humanities and uh, sciences is not something which can be useful to face the global challenges we have today. You know, important research program which will be the financial and the strategic tool for the Uh, I say that especially uh, directed to uh, international students who are here today. The name is Horizon 2020. And the topics which Horizon 2020 proposes to the European community are aging society, climate change, migrations, and these are really global challenges, and we don't face a, them without a multidisciplinary approach. So we have these treasures here, and I think we have to work to implement these topics according to this approach, also in other contexts, also in other Italian universities. The second question I want to point is that being located in Italy, for the VIU community, for the VMU campus, is a big responsibility and a big opportunity too. Because uh, let me say, uh, and I'm a bit proud of, it, of that, Italy is not uh, a country like another in terms of history of art, history of sciences too, and uh, in terms of its contributing to the European identity. So you have 
a big opportunity and a big responsibility in this campus in Venice. This university, in other terms, uh, reminds us that culture can become an instrument of international relations and foreign policy. I say that to one of the <laughs> most prominent and outstanding representative of the Italian diplomacy. I think um, the ambassador Umberto Battani can agree with me if I say that culture is uh, a part of the foreign policy of a country. And science is still another very important part of the diplomacy, the foreign diplomacy of a country. So there is a lot we can do, <coughs> dear friends, dear students, to prevent some of the most dramatic events we face today, in these days, especially in the Euro-Mediterranean area. And thinking of the cries of pain of the Yazidis in Iraq, or the victims of Boko Haram in Nigeria, and all these geopolitical periphery, just to mention the words uh, that Pope Francis um, assigned to these, uh, to these uh, dramatic events uh, some weeks ago, is, is, is in Venice uh, today, if I, if I near read here. Near, here. Very near here. So, periphery of the world in, in the, 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 the framework of uh, Pope Francis is all those countries which are not in the center of decision-making processes. And if we, we use uh, culture, if we use education, if we use this bridge, tools we have in our hands to make closer these parts of the world, these peripheries, to the center, decision-making heart of the Western world. Europe is one of that. Russia is one of that. The US is one of that. I think that will improve our capability to, to give an answer, a different, and a different answer to the problems we have at international level. In this view, I think I can say that institutions like the VIU are not only a center for knowledge creation, but also a powerful instrument for cultural diplomacy. And this is one of the starting points of my brief consideration about the internationalization process. Well, internationalization in higher education is a growing opportunity for all the European countries. I want to give you an idea of the process, uh, just quoting some OECD data. Maybe you know some of that, but it's maybe useful to, to mention some basic uh, features. Students uh, who choose a study abroad program in the world, worldwide, are now more than 4.5 million per year. With an average annual growth rate of almost 7%, seven, between 7 and 8%. So it's a big process, and it's going on, and it's growing on. Second, the majority of these students, more than 50%, are outgoing from Asia, mostly China, India, and Korea. And among the most attractive countries, the so-called so big players in the education global market, now we have Australia, Austria, Luxembourg, New Zealand, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom. So it's a landscape which, which is changing very, very fast. And we have to be aware of this very, very changing landscape in our horizon. But Europe is still the top destination for students uh, who choose a study abroad program in the world. And uh, Europe now hosts less than 40, than 50% uh, of them, followed by North America with 20, and Asia with 18%. So Europe is still one of the most uh, preferred destination of international students. 
this is a very important content we have to consider when we, we try to improve our mobility processes and internationalization in, uh, tools in our system. As these figures I mentioned reveal, um, internationalization is a big opportunity for the European system. Apart from the high ranking of the university in education research, reasons for attractiveness may be found in other very known factors. In my opinion, this is a very personal view, for Europe these factors are welfare, tolerance, peace, way of life, these are not aspects of the community, scientific community system, this is which is outside of the border of the university, but it, the, these are very, very important aspects when an international student can choose uh, in the United Kingdom, Italy, France, or other countries to study abroad. So now I think we can say that education may also be considered as a fluid and open market because no de destination country may assume to have the trust of welcoming foreign students forever. There is not uh, a fixed point in the ranking. For instance, percentage of foreign students who choose the United States dropped from the 23 uh, in 2001 to 16 in 2012 while the students directed to Germany fell of three points in the same period. So it's a very mobile situation. And uh, what can we do? Italy is my country. I'm minister now in my current position of this country in charge for education, higher education and research. So my question is, what can specifically my country can do to attract more foreign students, to become more international, to become more open than it is, considering its history, considering its long-term tradition of open country. There is much to work, in my opinion, really, to be done, much work to be done. The Italian universities are here, some outstanding colleagues uh, were the governor, president, rectors of important Italian campuses is now less attractive than some years ago, also for Italian students, you know, we know very well. But uh, we have some obstacles that we have to overpass. First is language. First is language, because language, of course, is one of the basic uh, component of the, ID the identity of a country. So. It's really very important that the Italian university can maintain their own identity, teaching in Italian some courses and choosing to, to maintain this, uh, this uh, sense of being Italian. But on the other side of the coin, we have the awareness that language can become a barrier. Language can become an obstacle. Because uh, if you have to invest, as it is for, I have a long experience in that field, for Chinese students or students coming from another language than in the European uh, family, and they have to invest more or less one year to, to reach a very good, in some, in some cases, excellent competence of Italian or another European language in terms of the common European framework, I can assign a C2, which is, the, which is the top of the ranking. In this case, maybe a Chinese student or an Asian student can decide to choose another country where English is spoken, because English is a more market-oriented language. So we have to consider this fact when we Spoke when we speak about internationalization of Italy. The second is, um, the second fact is that colleges and accommodation for students and researchers are a basic factor of internationalization. It's easy to, to say 
to, to, to make this statement here because this is a, a very, a very well-done model for accommodation and for accepting international students. But I want to, to give a message to my Italian colleagues who are here in the first row. Please try to do something like this as, as soon as possible and uh, with the help of the Italian ministry, of course, and uh, considering the context of uh, city campus university, which are the model of Italy and other European countries, ma please try to do the best in terms of better accommodation system, better and easier tools of accepting international students. Because if we have may less obstacles in terms of language and more attractiveness in terms of accommodation, I think we'll do the, the fundamental step we still need to be really a true international higher education system. But Italy is not an isolated country as all the other United States United members, uh, uh, the other members of the e European Union. And all what we decide, all that we decide here, uh, must be oriented in a, in a European perspective. It will, Italy is one of the main countries and a founding member of the European Union, you know very well, so that an Italian strategy for uh, higher education and for internationalization must be considered and must be read within the framework of the European strategies. During the current semester, we have a great opportunity as a country because you know we are uh, the president of the Council of the European Union and the government is supporting, strongly supporting a vision of the role of education and higher education based on the central role of research, innovation and training as the fundamental basic source of growth and employment. In, in Europe, we have a very dramatic problem, which is unemployment, especially concentrated in the young people uh, sector. But beyond the very well-known kind of answers, uh, which comes from economy, which comes from uh, uh, la um, job market reforming. We have to find other solutions and the new solution will be founded in our opinion in training, education and research. These are the three pillars of the new strategies for Europe and we are going to, to propose to the new commission and the new parliament as president, Italian presidency to, in order to, to put these topics at the center of the European agenda in the following uh, five years. Three million Europeans joined uh, the Erasmus experience since uh, 1987. So it's more than, 20, than 25 years that we have an European mobility. By doing so, not only they strengthen their personal growth, in my opinion, they also put one or more brick in the building of a truly, of a truly European community. But we have to go on. We have to, to improve the process. In Italy, 12% uh, of Italian graduates has had an Erasmus experience. It's not so much. And uh, last year, my country attracted 20,000 Erasmus students. It's, it's a lot, but it's not enough. I think that these figures must uh, suggest that we can do more, also in terms of mobility strategies, also in terms of uh, uh, encouraging the process of internationalization inside the European Union. So that's the reason why we have to make sure that Erasmus experience could be fully integrated into the curriculum of all our students. This is the proposal we'll, we'll do at the end of the uh, semester, of the Italian presidency semester. I would like to, 
to call it compulsory Erasmus. <laughs> I know that it's a very strong concept, but it could be really something very, very effective because you know that if people can go around and uh, young people can study abroad and be recognized in their choosing another university in another country, learning another language, and uh, also experiencing other models, other methodologies of learning and teaching the topics they, they choose, I think that this is a very simple and a very revolutionary way to, to make Europe a true international and very cohesive uh, community. So this is, will be one of the Italian proposals at the end of the semester of uh, Italian presidency. The second tool is uh, the so-called European Research Area. Maybe you heard of it, ERA, in the acronym. It was launched at the European Council of March 2000, so it's now almost 15 years ago and found its place in the treaty on the functioning of the European Union at uh, the article uh, 179. Yeah. Despite this uh, solemn statement, sometimes Europe, may I say, gives, give us a very solemn statement, the progress toward a genuine, a true European research area is not so com not, it's not accomplished, is not so well defined after 15 years. So we have to ask what's, what's going wrong, which is the reason why we didn't succeed, as in other fields, of course, but just considering the, the question of how can you create a true European research space. In my opinion, uh, ERA is one of the priorities of the Italian semester at the European Union, because if we can really contribute to make our researchers, not only our students, our researchers, our young intelligence, to be mobile, to can find a job, not only in the country where they 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 being graduated, but in another country. And we, we, if you can really help them to do that, without so many obstacles they, 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 they find today, then we'll have really contribute also to the growth and the employment process. This is not, they, 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 can, they can seem different sides of the coin, but if we consider in the same perspective, the perspective of try to develop Europe, not only in qua at quantitative level, but also at qualitative level, you see that European research area is the main objective of our, of the next five years of the new commission, the new parliament, and the new council of Europe. I, as a scholar, I'm, I'm an historical linguist, so I dedicated some of the so-called best year of my life to, to study the process of um, disseminating ancient culture in Europe, what we can say, uh, something like Europe in the Middle Age. And uh, I can say that also in the Middle Age, there were very, very solid, very, very important research and learning infrastructures they call them libraries. They call them um, church, schools, and training activities. They call them Latin teaching as a second language in very many parts of Europe. So, dear friends, dear students, dear president, please try to share this, this uh, uh, vision with me. We have to do the same now. We have to try to build new infrastructures, new intellectual infrastructures. We'll, we'll, we'll not call them libraries, not, not only libraries. We'll call them um, synchrotron, 
center that we have here uh, in uh, Friuli Venezia Giulia. We'll call them clusters for humanities and social sciences and or clusters for scientific topics uh, about environment, about energy, about the big challenges I mentioned in my introduction. This is the very, very important challenge we have at academic, at political, at uh, how do I say, general level. So, if we, we'll, at the end of this uh, very intensive period, uh, this semester of the Italian presidency, we'll have be very, very effective in our moral suasion with other European, with the other European member states about these priorities, about this uh, focusing on research, innovation, training, and internationalization process of the European higher education system, I think we'll have, we'll have had something very important, more similar to what ancient Romans did some centuries ago, and uh, we'll have created a very international community, very important in Europe, and a new reference point for the international higher education system once again. Thank you so much.